What the hell happened to 3D Robotics? A few years ago, 3D Robotics looked like one of the most promising drone startups in North America. Nowadays, they're barely even taken into account in the drone industry. In this video, I'm going to discuss how that happened and if GoPro is going to suffer the same fate. 3D Robotics was founded in 2009 by Chris Anderson and Jordi Minos. In the beginning, the business just really sold autopilots out of their garage. But in 2012, they wanted to try something different and Anderson went looking for funding. By November of 2012, Anderson had obtained $5 million in funding. They built up offices in Tijuana, Mexico, and San Diego, California, and the next year, 2013, they raised $30 million in funding. Now, 2013 was a big year for drones, because in 2013, the DJI Phantom, released in 2012, was really starting to catch on. As early as 2013, DJI was already becoming a leader in consumer drone technology. They were the first real Chinese drone company to start marketing in the USA. They marketed in Europe as well, but they set up an American office. A man named Colin Gwynn joined that office. Now, throughout the year of 2013, Colin Gwynn was really known as the face of DJI. But something happened between DJI and Colin, I'm not really sure what, no one's really sure what, but they separated forcefully. And with that, he went to join 3D Robotics. Now this, in my opinion, is where 3D Robotics' motto went from let's teach people how to build drones to let's be better than DJI. I also think this was their biggest mistake. At the time, 3D Robotics DIY Build Your Own Drone Store was doing just fine online, but they took it to heart to be DJI and release the best ever consumer drone. First, they released the 3DR Iris in 2013. The Iris had flight control problems, it had GPS problems, it was basically unreliable in every sense. It also looked really ugly and just overall it didn't perform. It did everything the DJI Phantom 2 could do, but worse. And I really like what 3DR was trying to do and what they stand for, but come on, this is this is just really bad. But that didn't stop 3DR. They set out to create the best consumer drone ever. Again. This drone was called the 3DR Solo. Solo was released in 2015. And if you've ever heard that name before, you'll know it flopped hilariously. Solo was an amazing concept. Had they executed everything properly and released it properly with everything in a functioning and working order, 3D Robotics possibly could have been on top of the drone industry right now. But they didn't. They messed up big time. Solo was bound to fail from the start. Not only did the Solo suffer from GPS problems and flyaways, but it also had weird flight characteristics and the gimbal was not released for two months after the initial release of Solo. GPS and flight characteristics aside, if you release an aerial photography platform without the part that allows it to do aerial photography, it's useless. Anyone on the market for a camera or video drone who bought Solo was left with something that produced unusable, vibration play, shitty footage. At this point, this is when the average consumer started realizing there was a problem. Around the time Solo's problems started to surface, I was living in Hong Kong, interning with a company called Team Black Sheep. I remember sitting down on the very first day with one of the founders of that company, Raphael Kirker, and talking to him about 3D Robotics. He told me within a year, 3DR wouldn't be around, and a little over a year later, 3DR has gone completely off the map. In March of that year, Colin Gwynn, their kind of frontman or now face of 3DR, left. They fired a large number of employees and shortly thereafter shut down most of their offices. Now, what did they do wrong? Why are they now focused only on software and not on top of the drone industry? Well, for starters, they had the disadvantage all along by being in Silicon Valley and not China. Again, DJI is Shenzhen based, and in Shenzhen, everything is cheaper than in San Diego or Tijuana or anywhere in the US for that matter. This allowed DJI to market their products for significantly less than 3DRs. 3DR also pinned all of their hopes on creating the best consumer drone ever. It took a huge gamble on moving from something that already worked and moving towards something they'd never tried before, and it didn't pay off. In fact, they're now $26.7 million in debt. But what was really the nail in the coffin for 3D Robotics was the fact that their shit just didn't work. Maybe people would have been willing to pay higher prices for the 3DR Solo versus the DJI Phantom line if the Solo outperformed the Phantom. But the Solo's release was rushed and nothing functioned properly. As a result, the Solo was dismissed just as fast as it was released. Now GoPro's kind of starting to sound a lot like 3DR right now. GoPro's US based and they're moving away from what they do, action cameras. They're releasing their first drone and trying to take over the market that DJI owns. But one thing I take away from 3DR's experience is that GoPro saw this all go down. GoPro knows what happened to 3D Robotics, and I think they're trying to avoid the same mistakes. They know that if they release this product and it doesn't work, they're done for. Have you seen their stock recently? This thing has to function. And to be totally honest, with GoPro's whole reputation at stake right here, I think it will function. I think it'll do exactly what it's supposed to do. Then again, the only thing that'll tell is time. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. DJI's new Mavic quadcopter is supposed to ship on October 15th, and GoPro's new Karma quadcopter is supposed to ship on October 23rd. But until customers worldwide have both of these in hand, we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, guys, and if you found that interesting, click here to subscribe. If you want to learn more about DJI versus GoPro, click over here to see the Karma versus Mavic video I made. And if you think this whole drone thing's interesting and want to learn how a drone works, click over here for my Drone Theory 101 series. I'm Riley with DIY Things That Fly, and I'll see you next time.